the 2043 Formula 1 season looks set to be a memorable one. Not least because it's the last season in which real cars lap real circuits before the introduction of a virtual championship played entirely on the PlayStation X. The decision to move Formula 1 into a computer generated realm in 2044 remains controversial and fans of the sport have been vocal about the high fees that will be levied for anyone that wants to watch the realistically rendered proceedings take place. Complaints that have been ignored by the brain behind F1, Bernie Eccleston's reanimated head. The 112 year old billionaire returned a tight grip on the sport, despite lacking any actual grip since he has no hands, nor indeed arms, legs, feet or torso, and is merely a head and neck inside an electrically charged tube of synthetic mucus. Virtual F1 racing is safer, greener and more accessible, the artificially alive Eccleston insisted recently. Plus, costs are vastly reduced, which allows the teams to give more of their money directly to me. That, then, is the future, which gives us all the more reason to celebrate the present and enjoy a fascinating final season of actual Formula 1 that is sure to keep you glued to your TV, if you have the Sky 3D feed, or unable to leave the chamber if you subscribe to Globo Hypercom's immersive F1 package and inhale each race directly into your brain as a cloud of largely non-toxic gas. Alternatively, you could head to a park bench in St Albans where an increasingly dishevelled Jake Humphrey and Eddie Jordan are certain to continue their bizarre and rambling BBC coverage, even though the pair only have access to a large bottle of cider rather than any actual footage. Grand Prix fans will surely continue to debate which gives the viewer the best experience. I mean, the gas puts you right in the thick of the action, and you soon get used to the headaches. Ran one comment on the live video chat wall at Formula1.f1 recently, though other fans quickly countered with comments such as Sky keeps it simple for just four grand a year, and I gave Eddie Jordan some chips and he told me about himself for 20 minutes. Legend. However, while the relative merits of rival broadcasts always spark debate, it's nothing to the ongoing arguments about the team's technical solutions that are sure to continue raging throughout 2043. When newly incumbent FIA President Sir Martin Brundle relaxed the technical rules back in 2038, initially as a reaction to the emergency ban on electrical power and the removal of fully electrified tracks following the deaths of several marshals and a stray dog, few could have guessed it would lead to such divergence in the design of the cars. For 2043, the rules remain broadly the same, and so will the vast range of technical solutions used by the teams, especially when it comes to engines. Red Bull will continue to use their two-cylinder turbocharged motor, and will continue to fuel it with a combustible version of their energy drink, despite several pit lane complaints about the smell. Many other teams will also stick with internal combustion, most fueled in line with the so-called FIA Option B, which uses a locally generated biofuel, hence the sudden increase in cows on the infield of many of the circuits. More unusual solutions include the NM14 of Team Mansell Castrol Pucker Pies, which will continue to harness the power of moaning, and the Mosley Sport MAX5, which will literally be whipped around each circuit. The only propulsion system that definitely won't return in 2042 is nuclear power, following the awful event of 2040's Chilean Grand Prix, which has left Honda F1 red-faced, their Asimo robot driver severely charred, and the El Circuito Generalissimo Pinoche, unusable for the next 100 years. Aero rules remain much the same as last season and that means a complete ban on movable aerodynamic devices still includes the driver's head. The FIA approved giant press stud that fixes each competitor's helmet to the bulkhead has been modified and so that it contains a tube through which drinks, liquefied foods and a calming melody of light jazz music can be fed. The controversial cockpit canopy first seen in 2039 remains, but the teams are now only permitted to use it during the bitterly cold Grand Prix of Siberia. There has been speculation that this bitingly icy Russian outpost would lose its place in the 2043 calendar after Bernie Eccleston's reanimated head launched a very public attack on the snow-covered event, insisting that if Siberia wished to remain an F1 venue it would have to become warmer and not as far away. Although the Siberians struggled to meet what was generally regarded as one of Eccleston's more reasonable recent demands, they benefited from the collapse of the planned Grand Prix of the Maldives after the organisers struggled to comply with Bernie's insistence that the track be less underwater. The rest of the calendar remains broadly the same as last year, the only absentee being the Grand Prix of North Korea, which has been cancelled after the country's extremist leader, Kim Jong-hui, declined to support F1 on the basis that Bernie Eccleston was too evil. 
The North Korean race is to be replaced by the brand new Republic of Scotland Grand Prix. The event, held around the streets of Edinburgh, is the brainchild of Scottish presidential hopeful David Coulthard and is sure to give the 70-year-old ex-racer a much-needed boost in the polls, following his disastrous policy proposal to overhaul the national dress by replacing the kilt with a pair of extremely tight white jeans. South of the heavily militarised border, the British Grand Prix remains at Silverstone for 2043, its perilous position secured after new owner Tesco removed the notorious statue of the track entrance depicting the late Lord Stuart of Dumbarton punching Bernie Eccleston in the face. If the tracks remain largely familiar, so do the teams competing in the 2043 Championship. Expect Red Bull to dominate as it has done for the past 32 years, uh, with the tussle for the Championship second place being where the real action is. In this fight, Audi F1 team is likely to be a strong contender, especially since it has abandoned its diesel-powered R25 TDI and reduced the number of power-sapping LED daytime running lights fitted to the front of the car. Of course, Audi is not only part of the VAG empire doing well in Formula 1, as Ferrari looks set to retain its title as the most successful merchandise seller for the 53rd year running, despite not actually having competed in F1 since its famous hissy fit of 2035. The history suggests it will one day return, as it did following the notorious tantrums of 2017, 2024, 2027 and 2033. There is said to be strong belief in Maranello that development work should be concentrated on the next generation of branded caps, t-shirts, watches and teddy bears rather than wasted on an actual Formula 1 car. Of the teams who actually bother to compete these days, front runners to challenge Audi's position include McLaren Red Bull, Williams Red Bull and Sauber Red Bull as well as the latest entry from the increasingly impressive MNS Virgin team. Further down the field, mid-ranking teams to watch include Westfield F1, built from the ashes of the old F1, Lotus F1 team, and Dutton F1, built from the ashes of another F1 team that was also called Lord Lotus back in the earlier part of the century. Teams also likely to make an impression in the middle of the pack include Peugeot, Renault, Nissan, Citroen F1, Facebook Racing, and the unique crowdsourced design from Twitter GP. This trio has something else in common since each is run by a love child of disgraced Italian Prime Minister Flavio Briatore, making them three of eight teams on the grid managed by the fruits of deceased ex benetton bosses' lines. Not for the first time, the bottom of the field is likely to be the inevitable home to, of perennial no-hopers Villeneuve F1 and its lead driver, the wildly delusional team boss Jacques Villeneuve. Despite being over 70 years old and not very good even when he was younger, the French-Canadian racer continues to insist that he is the best person to drive the unhelpfully wide JV04, and the prospects seem little better for the team's second car, occupied by the deep pockets and shallow talents of Taki Nui's grandson, Akio. Of course, not all former world champions hang around the paddock like an unwelcome and especially pungent fart. Jensen Button, for example, continues to impress both for his performance as the 62-year-old boss of Jaguar Button F1 and for his combination of a tidy beard, luxuriant hair and large helicopter, which has earned him the paddock nickname of Noel Edmonds, a reference to the similarly coiffed broadcasting legend who died after a tragic box-opening accident in 2023. Button's driving days are well behind him, save for the arrest of Etienne Arnoux forced him to help out at the 2036 Republic of the Congo GP, and the British team boss must be relieved that he doesn't have to compete with the new generation of prepubescent whiz kids brought into the sport following the relaxation of minimum age requirements. No one typifies the new breed more than last season's champion Miami Hamilton, protégé of proud grandfather Lewis. Despite being just eight years old, prodigious talent Miami dominated every race for Red Bull last year, except for the night event in Singapore where he had to retire early because it was past his bedtime. At the other end of the scale, 54-year-old veteran and 15-time world champion Sebastian Vettel continues to put in solid performances for the Red Bull seniors team, though many believe his driving hasn't been the same since his index finger was amputated after suffering arthritis brought on by overuse. Also at the older end of the scale is once-admired German driver Mick Schumacher, who at almost 43 years old has found his surprise comeback to, to the sport much harder than he expected. I tried to warn him, quipped his legendary father Michael during last year's Iranian Grand Prix, Finally, Brazilian Rubens Barrichello recently announced that he hopes to return to F1 this season, even though he's 70 years old and has been saying that every year since 2012.